The number one mistake I see people doing when they use AI in chat GBT when creating content is they sit there and don't use their own unique message and their own unique voice on there, okay? That's exactly why we brought in Amy Yamada. Her specialty and method is coaching and getting your voice out there, using your specific message and your guys' authentic voice and especially using ChatGBT and AI. So we talk about all those cool things, talk about tips, tricks, prompts, the whole shebang with AI. So let's check out what Amy has to say about that. Amy Yamada, what is going on? Welcome to the show. Thank you for your time today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm super pumped to, first of all, just reconnect with you guys and then provide any value that I can for the amazing audience. So thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yeah. No, this is going to be a great discussion. And we, we we go a ways back through like, you know, the Black Belt community, which is, you know, shout out to Taki Moore, Carrie, all those amazing people. So <laughs> that's where we connected with you. And honestly, it's been, uh, it's been great. You've been a wealth of knowledge and you've helped a lot too. So that's the beauty again of masterminds correct so true yeah i'm always so grateful for just all the all the connections and relationships <laughs> we make i mean i think that's like one of the biggest values of being in a mastermind and and actually caring enough to like contribute to it and also meet new people so yeah i've loved getting to know you guys over the years and yeah absolutely <laughs> <laughs> all right let's kick this off so we like to start off our podcast discussions and conversations with really just like having like a mass message to the masses out there right so let's say uh where, where are you located again i'm in seattle okay seattle so let's say like the the governor of seattle or just let's say it was the president we're just like amy i'm gonna grant you like a viral message to go out to everyone so what would that message be and why yeah oh wow what a great opportunity for me. <laughs> I, would, I would say like just above and beyond business, you know, just be your authentic, authentic self and be your truth. Because at the end of the day, like that's, that's what it's about, you know, in this life about really getting to know each other, getting to know yourself, getting to build solid relationships that are real and authentic and raw. Like to me, it's about being your authentic self, speaking your truth, even when it's uncomfortable. It's just, it's just been a journey for me and I would want to encourage everyone to just be true to who you are. I like it. All yeah, right. That's something, that's something we're going to definitely dive in a little bit later when we start talking about AI, like how to use your authentic message and self too. But um, what I want to ask to kind of to piggyback off of that is just how did you get into coaching, Amy? Because you have a background like, you know, in a local like Seattle media company as a director in marketing advertising. So how the heck yeah. did coaching even like come along? That's a great question. You know, I, I, I was in the local media for about 15 years and I, I could have stayed in it forever. Like any of us who worked a job or worked in corporate and I just, I, I enjoyed it to a degree, but there was something deep down inside saying like, there's something more for me. There's something different. And initially I didn't know what that was, but what I did know for sure was that at some point I knew I wanted to go off on my own and become my own boss. So mm -hmm. it definitely had to do with, um, as I started to have more and more freedom, even in my job, I was like, wow, I'm really liking this freedom of not needing to go and be in an office or a cubicle all day or be at all these meetings. I just thought, gosh, I really want to create more and more freedom for myself. So initially it was a lifestyle decision. And, um, and I also knew that I, I wanted to help people in some way. I just didn't know how. So it was very broad at the beginning. Like I was like, do I, do I go into life coaching, business coaching, business consulting, marketing consulting, event planning? Like I just started thinking about all my all of my background and thought about what would I love to do and who would I love to work with? So it definitely wasn't an overnight decision. It was something that was calling me forward. And uh, ultimately I landed in the coaching world because I just noticed that these were my people and I wanted to help more coaches for other businesses and also work through all their limiting beliefs. So it's been awesome. Yeah. For me. yeah. That's awesome. I just wanted to ask too, because this, this, this will probably be helpful for the audience because there's several entrepreneurs that listen to our show and they're probably thinking, I'm in that same situation that you were yeah. once in. And it's like, what are some signs that really stick out that you can go back to and think about like that really made you be like, okay, I know I'm making the right decision. And now is the time just to just do that. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like there's a, an intuition piece here, right? Mm -hmm. I think deep down inside, we know. And yeah. for me, in my case, the last six months that I was working in the corporate world, I just remember every day when I would, you know, drive into work or just when I was heading into my job, right? Where Whether it was driving into the office or meeting with a client, there was something in me like, I don't want to be doing this, right? Mm -hmm. like, I don't want to be going here. I'm not... And I felt guilty because I thought, gosh, I should be, I should be grateful for this job. I should be grateful for this mm -hmm. opportunity. So there's like this conflicting energy inside. And deep down inside, I just knew. I thought, I, I really believe that I'm meant to go off my own. Like, so I think it's just tapping into your own truth and saying, is this, is this the path that I want to continue taking? 
or am I actually not fulfilled doing what I'm doing right now? Yeah. And, and I think, and, and, and to not wait until something comes up in your life, you know, like sometimes people will ask me like, what was, what was that moment? Right. And yeah. for me, it was, I, uh, back, back in 2010, I went through the experience of losing my mom and gotcha. that was such a wake up call for me. You know, I had an incredible mom. I, I still think about her every day. She lives on, yeah. in, on in my heart. And when, when I went through the experience of her passing, I was like, wow, I'm really not in this human being experience forever. And if there's something that I want to do, I've got to figure it out. And I've got to do it now and not wait. And so that was just a big wake up call of how precious life is. And, um, and so why not figure it out sooner than later, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And, I, and yeah. there's a lot of things that we can resonate with this. I mean, we lost our father at, you know, 17 years old too. So it did put a different lens on, all, on us too. So we, we see things different. We treat life with more urgency than other people would. And I remember too, like I was working a job at a hospital commuting 45 minutes each way, you know, when I was like 23, 24 years old. And I was like, this is just not it. I remember sitting in the car, looking at the clock. I'm like, Oh, it's time to almost clock in. I was like, contemplate, should I just drive off? And so I get it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. That, that gave me the chills though. Like how you said about like your mom too. So that's, that's, that's crazy. But um, I just, you mentioned limiting beliefs too, right? So what were some of those like limiting beliefs that you had like to take that plunge, you know, to really kind of go all in? For sure. I mean, one of them was I remember being concerned about things like benefits, like how am I going to get benefits if I go off my own, right? I'm so mm -hmm. used to having this nice job package. And I remember talking to other people who had become entrepreneurs before me and they said, oh, you can figure that out. Like you could, like insurance and all that, like you can figure that out. It's taxes that you want to like learn. I'm like taxes, I'll figure it. Like I, I, totally thought that that's something my CPA would handle perfectly, which I'm so glad that at some point I switched CPAs and learned more about taxes. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I was, it was definitely the fears of um, just wanting to have some level of certainty or some level of safety uh, with having this benefit package. And then I, over time, I realized, oh, I can create my own benefits. I can, I can buy that for myself. I'm actually already buying that for myself just through the company. It's just when it's already taken out of your paycheck, it doesn't seem like a thing, but it is. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I definitely had fears of just what I was used to. And also, you know, what if it doesn't work? <laughs> what if I go off on my own? What if I take this leap of faith and I don't generate enough income for myself? And and of course, I had people around me that were saying, like, why would you go off on your own when you've got a solid job and a career that you've been in for so long, you know, for 15 years? And I said, this is just not this is just not my calling. Mm -hmm. So um, but yeah, there was definitely multiple limiting beliefs. And it's not that they all go away. I mean, every time I stretch myself in my business, I hit that invisible ceiling like, oh, there it is. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, it's just now I'm much more aware of them. Like, oh, there it is. Okay. Got to face that. Got to walk through it. You know, either stay stay safe, but stay small or go all in. Yeah. So, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And it's crazy because a lot of people think that it's like, we're like, oh, I broke this, like, you know, false of relief, check, check it off the box. And it's never going to come back again. I mean, that, that comes back up, you know, it's kind of like a wildfire, right? It's just, you don't let it get out of control. You just tame it a little bit. Right. <laughs> yes, for sure. For sure. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, I'm always getting out of my comfort zone. I mean, it's, um, I feel like just some of us are like built that way. Like, you know, sometimes I wish I could just chill out, <laughs> but, but it's not <laughs> who I am. So again, that's, that's where that authenticity piece comes. It's like, no, it, there must be something within me that I'm built that way. Where it's like, no, go to the next level, try the new thing, take that risk, take that leap. And looking back, I wouldn't change any of it because even the times when things went sideways or things felt very challenging, that's of course when I had my biggest growth in terms of how I learned through those moments. Even though sometimes I would not have chosen the way in which I learned them, but um, but to me, this is this is about really living a life like fully and going all yeah. in. So yeah. yeah. I love that. And I'm, I'm interested to know too, like to, uh, to kind of go back, you know, when you're with your upbringing, you were born um, in Japan on a military base, which is very interesting. So yeah. I'm sure there was a lot of good character traits and just values instilled upon you at an early age. So tell me about that kind of growing up in that environment, how that was, how that carried over to who you are today. Yeah. You know, I, it's, it's funny. I, I literally just yesterday drove my, my brother and his family to the airport because they're heading to Japan to, to mm -hmm. go travel around, even go back to where we grew up in Yokohama. Um, but uh, it was it was a really like looking back now, I mean, that's all I knew. But looking back now, I can see how different it was from most most people that I know. Um, so yes, I was born and raised in, in Yokohama, Japan. And uh, there was there was a, a military base, but it was like there was the big base called Yokosuka Naval Base. And then there was a smaller community that was like an annex to it. And long story short, 
it felt like um like little america in <laughs> japan in a big japanese city right was, yokohama's a big city um and i'm half japanese half american and so i lived in a very bicultural and at my school was very multicultural um surrounding and environment um and i'm so so grateful for that now because when i would look at even my circle of friends there was every ethnicity every you know there was a lot of people who were uh, mixed ethnicities like me and so to me that was what the world was like i i didn't experience racism or you know some things that i it, to me it just wasn't a part of my upbringing because mm -hmm. everyone was so diverse um and so we would get to know each other and get to know each other's cultures and beliefs yeah. and values um, and, uh, and then, you know, I, I learned a lot from both, like both the American and Japanese cultures in terms of, um, uh, just who I, who I'm being in the world and how I can grow up with the, you know, the, the cultural, um, I mean, in some ways there was some strictness just to be real, like, you know, like mm -hmm. I, whenever I talk to other people from certain Asian cultures, I, I feel like I can speak this freely and just honestly, there was definitely like these very high expectations as a student, like academics are very, uh, just a very high you know, so there's high standards that are expected of, of a student. Yeah. Um, and so I definitely would put a lot of pressure on myself. Like, oh, I got to be like a top student, got to be mm -hmm. a top everything, you know? So and on one hand, it had me strive for that. On the other, it had me put like unnecessary pressure on myself, if that makes yes. sense. So, you know, like anything, I, I look back now and I'm like, of course, I, I look at what good came up from it. And there's things that I do differently now to just be me instead of feel like I have to be this perfect person, which was yeah. an interpretation I made as a child. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. It, it, was it your mom or your dad that kind of had maybe like an entrepreneurial spirit or did none of them have it? Oh, my dad, for sure. So he, okay. um, he was an entrepreneur. He had, he had his own business for all of my upbringing. Like he, he also worked for corporate, like he worked for Hitachi for a number of years before I was born. And then uh, once my parents you know, started having kids, I have two older brothers. Uh, they, they made the decision. My mom was a teacher on the base and my dad was an electrical engineer and uh, was very good at what he did. And he decided to stay home, but work from home. And so, uh, so he would have clients who like he had this, um, this one room that used to be a guest room and it became like his work room for all these like things that I can't even explain, <laughs> you know, just <laughs> little things. Yeah. And, um, and he did really well. And so, um, so yeah, he, he definitely had that entrepreneurial spirit and could create his own schedule. And because my mom was a teacher and he could create his schedule, our summers were the time that we would travel as a family longer than what most family like we'd go for like a month and a half and travel you know yeah. so I, I thought that was normal now i'm like so grateful <laughs> for those experiences but uh it was really neat to have that kind of schedule that's yeah. awesome that's that's really cool so i want to go back to like to like you know so you left the, the local media company in seattle right eventually and then um, i read online in 2017 was like kind of like i think that big opportunity where you're able to speak in front of 800 like entrepreneurs so take us through that and would you say that's really kind of like the the day or the moment where you were like I got this, like, this was literally like, kind of like the test. I got it. I'm on, I'm on the right path. It was definitely a big tipping point for me because I, I had always loved public speaking and wanted to speak in front of larger audiences. And, um, and even before I was an entrepreneur, I started emceeing locally, like on the side, cause I was like, I really want to gain more experience speaking on stages. Uh, so I just started letting people know, like everybody knew, like, Hey, I am now offering speaking services. <laughs> so, um, you know, someone who's hosting an event, they're looking for an MC or a motivational speaker. I would love to be considered. And, um, and so I, I already gained some momentum there and gained some experience. Um, however, it was, it was quite different being a speaker in front of an audience of entrepreneurs on my topic, right? Like on, on the, the, the theme that I wanted to speak into. And because it was such a large audience that I knew was going to be speaking in front of, I just wanted to take myself to that next level. And I invested in a top speaking coach and really worked on crafting my talk and practiced it. I mean, every night I was in my living room, just like in front of no one <laughs> just like talking as if I was on, on stage. And, and so it just uh, had me take my, my speaking to the next level. And it was an epic experience. Like I'm so grateful for, for that time awesome. at the event that year. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, Amy, let's shift it. I want to shift gears here. Let's talk about some juicy, juicy stuff. Um, <laughs> AI, chat GPT, all these hot trending things. So on a beginner's level, what is AI and, and why should coaches really care and be aware about implementing into their coach oh, implementing this into their coaching models right now? And really quick, yeah. Amy, can you plug your um your actual ebook and even like your yeah. free training on it too? So the listeners can go and get that. Absolutely, absolutely. This has been the most exciting time, in my opinion, to be an entrepreneur that has, mm -hmm. a, you know, significant online component. Um, 
You know, it's, it's funny when you ask that question, like, what is AI? It's such a big question. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I would say is, I would say AI is here. This isn't defined it, but it is here. The future is now. And um, and I've been really specifically focusing on chat GPT because there's, there's so many AI platforms. There's so much to learn. So I thought, you know what? I'm just going to go all in on one main platform yeah. and I can always grow from there or have other guest speakers come in as I'm doing these programs on AI. And um, I would just say that even with what I'm teaching when it comes to chat GPT, it's, it's one small piece of what AI can do, not only in the coaching industry, but in the world, like the world is shifting. This is the most revolutionary technology I have experienced probably in my life, but yeah. if we were to compare it to something, I would say it's as revolutionary as our phones and as email and as the internet. So whenever I hear somebody say, Oh, this is the new trending thing. Like, no, it's not like, Oh, this is like clubhouse. I'm like, no, clubhouse is great, but it's, this is not, Clubhouse. Right. This is not just a flash in the pan thing. No offense to Clubhouse, you know, but there was a big buzz about it and then it kind of simmered a little bit. And so the, the thing I want to say is there will be early adopters and there'll be late adopters and there'll be like my friend's dad who refused to ever get a cell phone, right? Like, so I would just say <laughs> it is, it is here, it is now, and it is something that at some point you will likely adopt if you haven't already. So it, it's, and it's a game changer. Like you can reclaim your time, your energy, um, where you can reduce costs in your business. For those of you mm -hmm. who want to increase your profit margins, like, let's go. Like, it can do so much for you and your business. Things that used to take us. All right, just give me one second. We'll get back to the training, okay? Now, look, if you are looking to enhance your content, if you're looking to really build what we call a content machine, okay? We have this awesome worksheet for you. So just check out the link below and you guys can download this awesome worksheet where there's like three or four different type of like exercises in there. You guys can really roll out some brand new content for your guys' online audience, your guys' brand, your offer, okay? Now back to the training. Days, hours or days or even months to create, it can do for you if you know how to use the tool properly. So I'm totally taking a stand for being an early adopter and also not just using it for productivity and for anyone who hasn't used it yet you'll see what i'm talking about as you as you start playing with it more and more but i, I would say let's not just use it for productivity let's use it to amplify our message let's bring authenticity let's bring heart into it so that when you optimize your inputs then the outputs of what you're having it create for you are true to your your authentic voice so yeah. um, I don't know if that really answered your question, but no. <laughs> time is now. No, 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 it's, <laughs> it's, it's good. <laughs> And, yeah. and I want to stay on that topic too. Like, how do you actually amplify like your voice using your own unique, authentic message? Because I played around with this too. So is Eric, we actually did a live training to our students last week on sharpening your messaging and using AI yeah. for content. And it's just amazing, like what it can actually do. So how do you actually use like your message, your voice? Because so, so many people will sit there and like, have it like write a prompt, but then they'll copy and paste it. Right. Yeah. It, it's, it's not just about like, there's a lot of, and there's a lot of prompts out there. Like here's a thousand prompts. Like I wouldn't buy into just playing with those prompts that are out there. I would say, let's take it a step further and go deeper. And at, at first I was, I was doing the same thing that most people do at the beginning, just prompting it to do something for you, right? Write an email about this workshop or write an, write a Facebook post about this thing that I have coming up. However, it, you know, it will create something for you, but it'll based, it'll be based on external resources, not you. So if you wanted to come up with a generic post or generic email or a landing page, you know, landing page copy or some form of communication, it'll do that, but it's not going to be originating from your authentic voice. So as I started to play with it more and experiment and bring in, like I've had my, my business, my business coaching business for 11 years and a core element that I've been teaching over the years is authentic messaging. Mm -hmm. So I thought, what if I brought this authentic messaging piece of what I've been teaching already for so many years into chat GPT and one of uh, like... But the core of what it is, is again, speaking from your heart. So the way that I've, I've now taught this with ChatGPT is to actually transcribe your voice. So you can use your note section on your phone. It has a little like microphone in the bottom right hand corner. So for those of you who have a, an iPhone, then you can just open up a new note, right? Like this, the mm -hmm. notes, you know, the notes that just are on your iPhone. And then there's like yep. this little microphone in the bottom right hand corner. So that can transcribe. Or there's apps like Otter, you know, there's a lot of apps that can transcribe your voice. Or if you're further along, you could do a Chrome extension. So there's, so my point is just find a way to transcribe what you're, you know, transcribe your voice and then say what you really want to say. So pick a topic, like, okay, I'll ask you guys, like for each of you, Chris and Eric, like what's a topic that each of you are passionate about? I would say for me, it's, it's really more of like the, the mindset type of thing of just changing, changing your thinking and challenging your thinking. 
Right. That's Challenging. Good. I think that's a great topic. What about you, Chris? Damn, you stole the thunder on that one. Um, <laughs> I would say, shit, you got me stumped. Let's go with his. <laughs> okay, we'll go with his. Okay. Yeah. So changing your mindset. So what you could do is you could just, instead of thinking about your whole message or say that you want to do some promotion for an upcoming webinar or workshop or virtual event or in-person event, instead of worrying about all the other elements of a message of, you know, when it is a call to action, right? Mm -hmm. Click on this link, like, let's just take all of the business stuff out. Like, okay, part of what I want to speak into is about shifting your mindset. It's going to be a component of this whole thing that I'm doing. So you do, this is what I like to do. I like to close my eyes. Sometimes that helps put my hand over my heart. This is a, we, we call it the heart speech, by the way. It's a heart speech. Mm -hmm. Okay. Connect in. And even before AI, I would teach people to do this because they wouldn't go deep enough. And so what is it that you really want to say? And I'd have them just like connect in with their heart. And then I'd have them say, what I really want to say is, right? It's like a human prompt. <laughs> what it, and so what I really want to say is, and then drop in and then say what you want to say without editing yourself, like getting all up in your head. And what I've found is when people do that, when they're willing to really go there, oh, it just gives me the chills because you can feel their energy, you can feel their heart. And there's it's a topic that they have been passionate about probably for a number of years, not since they were young. And, and when we bring that into the complete message, then what, what ChatGPT, for example, can create for you with that piece in it and a prompt will sound so much more like you than if you have it create a generic post or email, mm. or whatever it is you're having it create for you. I got yeah. you. And that, and, that, and that's really powerful too, because I, I think too, like even when it comes to like, you know, really identifying your audience, your messaging, that's that's huge for for anyone, you know, anyone's business. And we practice, I mean, we, we dr try to drill this down to our coaches in our programs and people just struggle to find and use their voice. So right. by by having something like this with Chat GPT, you know it's it's a it's a tool and it's obviously a little bit easier, right? To to craft that, so much easier, yeah. Because then you're not worrying about having it be polished. Like mm -hmm. to me, it's about you being you, right? right so yeah. you transcribe it and then you copy and paste it right into Chat GPT. Or we have a tool that we've developed that's a prompt generator, so we use that. But that way, it's like you're almost like deconstructing your message. And this one piece, your heart speech is, is like what is going to make the post, the email, whatever it is you're having to create sound like your authentic voice. So it does make it easier because you're not having to think about it coming across all polished and perfect. It's not about that. It's yeah. just about you being you and saying what you really want to say, and then having the rest of the prompt take care of how it's going to create the full, again, whatever content piece you're having to create. Yep. Got yeah. it. And, and I like what you said too, that hack of just like completely getting like, stop thinking about the business stuff, right? The headline, like the times, like the call to action, the colors of the buttons, right? Above the fold, whatever it is, like literally just go into like your heart and what you're thinking and get what you want to say out there and then start filling in all the business stuff, right? Yeah. Because the way I look at it, it's like, it's just like, in, I mean, we're, we're in, a, in an industry of building a real relationship. Yeah. So, I mean, if you think about it in life, if you're building a real relationship, whether it's a friendship, whether it's a romantic partnership, a spouse, right? It's like you want to you want to be who you really are and you want them to be who they really are. So if we're not being that, then we're not building a real relationship with our audience or our ideal clients. Right. And so that's why I feel it so strongly about this piece around humanizing AI with our our heart speech, speaking from our heart, speaking from our truth and bringing that into everything we do. Yeah, yeah it's literally it, I, I say it's a P to P like people to people business. It is. That's right. So even if we're using this tool, which that's what it is, it's a tool, then we can really leverage it with that, that P2P business, right? Like yeah. that, that type of a vibe. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And kind of like your prediction, right? Because you're more kind of like inversed in this, right? Like for right now, from my knowledge, what I know is like, you know, a coach can use this for again, like writing like landing pages, copy headlines, ebooks, books, whatever, right? But like, what do you foresee like this, like chat GBT being able to do in a coaching, uh, you know, business or something like that, that you're not, that nobody else can kind of see right now? Oh my gosh. I mean, mm -hmm. it's been fascinating because I'm, I'm having conversations with like AI power users and development teams at this point. And I mean, every time I have these meetings, my mind continues to be blown. So I believe it's, it's completely going to change how we run our businesses. I mean, even... Okay, so here, here's one thing I'll speak into. I know there's a lot of like fear mongering around like this is going to replace all these jobs. Right. In reality, it actually is. Like at first I was saying, no, it's not. Like I was totally taking a stand. It is though. I mean, it it, it can do things 
and I hate to say this, but I just want to be so real. Like it can do things that currently people are doing and that we're investing a lot of time, money and energy on. Yeah. And, and so it's just a matter of how you want to run your business. And it's, it's, I think there's an initial resistance. I even talking about this, I have resistance thinking about it. It's like we have initial resistance to using a calculator when that was invented, right? We have initial resistance to using the internet or email or, or even setting up a Facebook. Like I remember when Facebook first, you know, came out, it's like, what is this thing? Right? Like, is it, you know, and it's like MySpace, that kind of thing. So it's, it's just about recognizing that the world is changing and not, not to be in a fear-based energy, but instead looking at things differently. Like imagine that you now have access to the all knowing, like, like you have access to a tool that has access to like trillions of parameters in its database. And it's not just a, a Google search. It's an actual conversation you can have with it. I mean, it, it's still hard for me to even wrap my head around it's it. It's mind blowing. So, yeah. So it's just like, okay, think about any, any job that you want to have done for you and think of it. Well, what if I can have AI do it for me? Right. Yeah. Not just copywriting content creation, but creating SOPs, creating systems, creating, um, I mean, even, even having a list of tasks, but then you can have it do the tasks. So it's just about getting in there and seeing like, okay, if, if I have a list of things that I want to do in my business over the course of this next week, what if I could do it in an hour, right? So these are the yeah. types of conversations we're having. Like, why would you spend 10 hours on something that you could do in an hour now, right? So it's it's just that mind blowing. I think it's just about us really playing with it, experimenting with it, learning how to use the tool in alignment with our own visions yeah, and having these types of conversations that... We don't get into a state of overwhelm, but just more like possibility and inspiration. Yeah. yeah. Very well yeah. put. Yeah. hundred percent. And I, I mean, obviously we're going to have you back on too, Amy, you know, because I know that like, as time goes on and you're talking to like these developers, you're in the trenches, you know, you're going to learn more stuff. So it'd be cool to have you back on, but uh, where can they find, you know, like your, your ebook or even like the webinar you have on it? Yeah, definitely. I'll be happy to, to share. So we, we've written a book called the ultimate guide to chat GPT for online coaches. And the content in there, I've, I've heard from copywriters and course creators. So it's, it's relevant for coaches and copywriters, content creators, like course creators. So if you're really wanting to leverage chat GPT to sound like your authentic voice in that guide, we walk you through our steps of our heart speech model. Um, and it has some specific prompts you can use. So I'll be happy to share that link with you. Um, and then we also have our, our chat GPT for, for coaches program. It's a, it's a 30 day program. And it's been so fun. We just wrapped up our second round of it. We're kicking off our third round right now. And it's been so fun just being in a community of like-minded entrepreneurs that want to learn how to leverage this tool with authenticity and heart and um, and and be ahead of the curve, like ahead of the game, you know, when it comes to being on that like cutting edge of this technology. So I'll be happy to, to share the links with you guys. Yeah, that'd be yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. So we want, want to spend some more time though, before we wrap up here, just on some like some lifestyle mindset questions, because you're, you're a high powered, you know, high achieving like entrepreneur. So I want to know some hacks and stuff that you, that you got going on. So I'm a big fan of like a morning routine, right. And really kind yeah. of winning and focusing on that morning. So what do you do, Amy, kind of like in your morning to really kind of just like be focused, you know, get those yeah. quick wins and carry that momentum on to play offense. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I really do believe in moving my body in the morning because it'll be easier for me to just set the, the tone of the day. If I do a, at least a, like whether it's a workout or going for a walk, getting outside, just something where I'm moving my body. So I, I definitely, I, I always have a better day when I move my body first, right? Like in the morning, I also love journaling. I, I just find that if I just have some quiet space to set intentions and also not have any rules around how I journal, like there might be a day where I just want to write about gratitude. There might be a day where I think I just ask myself a question like, what would have me be proud of myself today? You know, yeah. like I want to yeah. be proud of me today, just focusing on one day. Um, or there might be another time when I'm just bullet pointing out some thoughts, you know, so I like having no rules in how I journal, just journaling what comes to my heart and mind and have some free flow to it. Um, yeah, so I just like to make sure that I I really focus on myself first, because in the past, I wouldn't do that. And you know, just get got to a point where I was like putting everything and everyone else first and leaving myself behind. And that doesn't feel good. So I'd yeah. say to, to find a morning routine that works for you um, and just try, try it, you know, and, and not, not have it be something that you feel like you have to do, but really truly something that you get to do. Like, this is how I'm going to start my day to be loving to myself. So yeah, those I, like I, nice. I like that. I like that you get that you get to do. 
Absolutely. And I get to do, I yeah, I, I've to. actually been quite, it, because <laughs> I can easily slip back to my old way of yep. not focusing on me first and just like get into work or get into helping everybody else out. And so what I've been doing lately is um, when I journal, I'll just put at the top, me first. <laughs> like, <laughs> When you're a little kid, we naturally like me first, me first. Like it's our, in our human nature as a child. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I want to go first, right? And like, and, and then we learn like, oh, that's selfish. Oh, that's this. And it's like, and I know there's something to like allowing somebody else to, you know, but if we complete, if we're, if it's like me last, like that doesn't work. And so I've just been in this energy. I've been like, this is one of my mantras, like me first and it's okay, right? It's, it's, <laughs> it's good. It's good for me yeah. to focus on me first because it's actually generous to others if I fill up my own cup because then I'll be able to serve everybody else better. Exactly. So exactly. It's, it's like we learn this over and over, but I can't learn enough for, for myself. So yeah, yeah, I like it. Good. I like it. All right, I'm gonna throw a deep question at you. So if you had five years to live, what would you stop doing? What would I stop doing? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's I just it's so funny. I just journaled about. I, I wrote down if I had one year to live, what would I do differently? Mm-hmm. Uh, I would be on on Zoom less. I, okay. I love it. And I also know that uh, that being on screens too much is not good for my soul, right? Yeah. And so I'm, I'm also already looking at ways to streamline that. Um, I would travel more with people I love. I love traveling. Um, I also love giving back in a big way. The, the time that I felt most lit up in my business was when I got behind my, my stepdaughter's charity. She started a charity when she was seven years old to help uh-huh. build girls in Ghana. And I'm like, wow. what am I doing with my life? <laughs> 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 And right. so I got behind her vision and I had her speak on my stage. I was like, hey, do you like to speak? She spoke on my stages. I introduced her to influential entrepreneurs. So she just basically did a speaking, uh, you know, experience for a couple of years. And we went from her having already raised $10,000 by the time she was nine to raising over $90,000. And then we got to go to Ghana in 2019 and uh, visit 10 villages in northern Ghana, very rural, because they wanted to have these ceremonies of all these wells that had been built due to our contribution. I mean, it to me that is so fulfilling yeah just caring enough about humanity in that way and then once the pandemic hit we we put that on the back burner for a bit but um but yeah i would i would say zoom less <laughs> travel more and give back in a bigger way and at the end of the day i'm all about the people i want to just continue yeah. to spend time with the people that i love yeah. and um you know do good in the world i mean that's to me i just like to keep it pretty simple Absolutely. Yeah. yeah no, those are all, sure. those are all amazing. So Amy, before I ask the last question, you know, I just want to take a, a second just to commend you, you know, number one, thank you for your time and coming on here. Like truly appreciate it. You know, I know you're very busy, but you know, you're, you're such a giving person too. You know, we've gotten to know you, you know, being in black belt and you're so giving then you're still giving. So I can always see you just being a giving person. So thank you so much. And just thanks. Thanks for your bravery and your courage this too, just to kind of stand in your own message and be like, Hey, this is like what it is with AI and I'm staying to it, uh, to it. And I'm going to help more people out with it. So thank you so much for doing that. I really appreciate yeah, it. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank, thank you so much. Also, I mean, I always love connecting with you guys, just your energy, your love, your heart. I always feel that's why whenever I hear from either of you, I'm like, oh, yeah, you want to connect with <laughs> like, I, from the beginning, right? Like, I just felt like we have that energy, you know, like, yeah. I, I always felt like, you know, we go back now a couple of years, but like, I feel like we go way back just because of who you are. And I, I hope that we get to meet up in person and Absolutely. hug it out, soon, you know, so. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So last question is like, what does it mean to Amy Yamada to live a dynamic lifestyle? A dynamic lifestyle? Oh, that's such a great question. I mean, it comes down to two words, love big, right? Like I just love to love people. I love to practice loving myself. I think if, if we all practice like a deeper level of love, which to me also means a deeper level of like caring enough to deeply understand each other, even if we have different perspectives, different beliefs, um, and, and, and seeing the world and like choosing to be a loving person, even if you meet someone only once in your whole life. Like I, I remember learning at one point that all of us on average will meet about 10,000 people in our whole life. And it's like t- a tiny little speck of a dot of the entire world's population. Yeah. Yeah. So crazy. Like, like the two of you are two of my 10,000. Like, wow. why would I not make that count? Like, why would I not crazy. just love you guys and see like, how can I help you? Like, how can we collaborate? You know, like, like I guess it gives me the chills every time I think about that because I'm like every single decision that we have made throughout our life led us to this moment on this podcast, connecting with these people, right? Like, ah, like it's too much to like think <laughs> about. And so I get chills because I'm like, wow, like every single person that we connect with counts. 
Wow. And so that's why wow. I'm the person who will end up hugging the Uber driver after they drop me off. Because I'm like, <laughs> hey, what's your dream? Like, I want to get to know you. You're, you're driving. I'm like the only person in your car from here to the airport. Like, tell me about you. And they're like, oh. And the, usually they have a story. Like, they, like it, it's usually the driving is not their full-time gig. They're like, oh, yeah, I'm working towards this. I'm like, oh, my yeah. gosh, tell me more. Right? I'm, I'm a curious person. So I say love big. Like, just love big. And, and just live live your life fully because we're not promised any number of days. And at, at yes. some point, at some point, all we'll wish for is one more day. Yeah. That's it. yeah. So wow. live it live it big, love big, have fun. We, we, we see the fire. We see the fire on your shoulders right now. Ooh, I was going to say, my, my <laughs> drop. <laughs> <laughs> love that. So Amy, where can the listeners connect with you and see all the cool stuff you're doing? Yeah, so everything is it's pretty easy. Everything's under my name. So amyyamada.com. My all my handles are under Amy Yamada. So yeah, DM me, reach out. I love meeting new people. And uh, I'm, I often host workshops. So I, I love to invite people to my workshops if uh, what I'm what I'm sharing is resonating with you with the lines. Um, and um, yeah, let, let's connect. I would love that. All right. Well, guys, we'll have that all linked up in the show notes, where to go find Amy and you guys better go see what she's doing. <laughs> she's doing some really cool stuff. But Amy, thank you again for your time, your wisdom. Really appreciate you. Absolutely. Thanks for thank having you, me. So You're much welcome. fun. Yeah. You're welcome. All right, guys, until the next time. All right. I hope you got one nugget on how to really use AI chat GPT to use your voice and your messaging and your guys' content. Okay. Next thing I want you to do now that you guys have that skill set, go watch this video right here. If you want to build a six figure coaching business, 